me um, go ahead and answer this question right here. Um, let me go ahead and answer this question right here. You know, oh boy. It was on my mind earlier this morning because people had asked me this question um, a little while ago in email. I just never did get back to it. It entered my mind, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do a video about it. Um, you, you're going to see the reason why, that it's important. That if you're going to listen to a preacher or teach anybody, they need to know Torah. Um, you know, all these unanswered questions that people seem to have, uh, or you try to go online um, and watch somebody's video or see what some other Christian or philosopher or Protestants has to say, uh, you're not going to get the answer. Because, number one, they're not Hebrews. Um, they're not a descendant of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And therefore, they had not been called to minister this. You, you know, the only way you can be called to minister something like this, you, you can be taught by a Hebrew. Um, but this seems to be the problem. Let me go ahead and just deal with it. I can go on it all day long, but that's the problem. Let me go ahead and answer the question so we can... Hopefully, maybe put it to rest. Um, there, there was a woman um, in the time of Jesus. The scribe and Pharisees had bought this woman uh, to Jesus. And she was caught in the very act of adultery. And, of course, the question is always asked is, uh, you know, the woman is caught in an act of adultery. And, you know, the law says that we should stone her. Of course, you know, the, the Christians and the Protestants, they try to capitalize on this. Um, all the time, you know what I mean? To, and because, you know, you've been trained and you had your conscience and mind manipulated and coerced against the law, which if you really truly understood the law, you'd do everything that you could not only to guard it, to uphold it, to defend it, to support it, and more than anything, love it and live by it. Uh, but the problem is, is that, you know, our minds have been tainted today from loving the law of y'all um, because we have heard so many different perspectives, different philosophies and teachings against it. Uh, the very thing that Jesus said that he wouldn't destroy, Christianity and Protestantism, the, the, you know, these European religions have destroyed it. Um, and now it's done affected your mind that even when you think of a question or something like that, your mind can only go so far as what the Christians and the Protestants have taught you. Now I'm going to say something before I answer this question right here. The religion of Christianity is not even written about in the book, in the whole entirety of the Bible. Neither is Protestantism. I mean, all these European creations of, of what people call uh, religion and uh, worship or righteousness, it's not even written about in the book. It, it's, you know, a, the student or someone, if you're going to read the Bible, it's, it's hard to miss the fact that the Bible is written uh, about one family. On the face of planet Earth, who just happened to be Israelites, come from the seed of Jacob. Jacob had four wives, and out of those four wives come 12 tribes, and they all come from the seed of Jacob. And uh, Israel in there to Mizraim, what you commonly call Egypt, then it up comes and pops up this big old family, which is utterly amazing to me today because now everybody on the face of planet Earth that has a Bible in their hand makes the assumption that they are a part of that family. It's amazing to me. But then when you listen to them, their, their, their religion, their philosophy, their perspective, their, their belief system, they do everything they can to tear it up. It's just, it just don't make no sense. But anyway, I think, let me, I got a Bible right here. It's over John the 8th chapter. And we'll turn over there just for a second. John the 8th chapter, and we'll go ahead and answer this, and hopefully we'll put it to rest. Um, it says, uh, verse 4. And they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. And that's a key, key word right there, key statement, key phrase in the very act. Um, now Moses in the law commanded us that should uh, such or that should such be stoned. But what sayest thou? Man, I need my glasses on. I ain't got my reading glasses up here. They put it a little bit farther away. And they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stood down, he stooped down, and with his finger he rolled on the ground, and as though he had heard them not. And so they continued to keep on speaking, he said. So anyway, to make a long story short, what happened was is that um, Jesus asked them, which one of you without sin? <clears throat> because none of them couldn't answer, so they all put their stones down, they all hightailed it, put their head between them. Tell them took all because you have to understand, even though they were scribes and Pharisees, 
they knew the law. They weren't going to contend against someone when they knew the law. It's just that they tried to do everything they can to be contentious, but when they knew they were had, uh, they had more honor and integrity than um, a lot of the contentious people do today. But let me go ahead and answer. I'll tell you what Jesus, what I think personally that he wrote on the ground. I think he wrote on the ground. Now, you have to understand, I know the law. Um, I know the Torah. So, therefore, I, I, you know, I'm qualified to answer this question. When I get finished answering this question, pretty soon you'll see everybody on the internet answering the question. But that's fine and good. Uh, but you know where the answer originates from. But anyway, um, for a man to commit adultery or a woman to commit adultery, she has to be with someone. And so I personally, I think that Jesus, when he rolled on the ground, he asked the question, where's the man? Uh, because, you know, according to Torah, a woman can't commit adultery by herself, but these, these scribes and Pharisees was going to stone this woman, hang her up by the head and stuff, um, when the truth is, a woman can't commit adultery by herself. According to Torah, uh, the only way that a woman can commit adultery is, number one, she's married. I know it's a new concept to you people. And, and the way that a man commits adultery is if he lays with a woman that is married. That would constitute adultery. So this woman had to be married. Um, so, and of course, the Torah, the penalty for adultery, is stoning to death. And you can't stone one party and not stone the other. It says what religion does. And they give women a bad rap. They're like they, they are the only ones involved in this whole thing. No, where's the man? Because we need to stone you too. Because that's what the Torah says. So Jesus more than likely wrote in the ground, where's the man at? I mean, if you're going to do some righteous judgment, where's the man at? This woman didn't commit adultery by herself. She's in the very act. But the only thing you got up in front of us is this woman right here. Where is the man? That's just like religion though, isn't it? Clean and right in their own eyes while they're a champion themselves to be everybody else's judges and victors. I tell you. But anyway, see the reason why you need to get out of these these uh, uh, religions and stuff? Because they're not going to teach you the right way. They're really true game. So the bottom line, Jesus said, I don't condemn you. I got something I want you to do, though, woman. What's that? I don't want you to go and, and stop practicing sin. I don't, I don't want you uh, committing adultery no more, okay? You, know? you can't bring a valid issue uh, before the court or before the law, before the judge, and you only have half of the Evidence there. Well, what have another had, man? Your, your case is invalid from the very beginning. We throw it out. I don't condemn you either, but I tell you this, but you just don't go and sin no more. How about that? Huh? Uh, and if you do, it's going to get worse for you. See, that's righteousness. And the uh, scribes and Pharisees have omitted a lot of things in the law. You know, mercy, judgment, truth, all, all this stuff. The same thing we got going today. You know, people, they just totally admit from the law, mercy, judgment, and truth in, in you know, when they're doing so-called what you call righteousness, you know I, I think religion is a very dangerous thing, matter of fact, religion even calls people to strap bombs to themselves and blow themselves up um, and no doubt uh, there are a lot of people that are dying spiritually because they're involved in religion, you may want to consider what I say and maybe the most I can understand it anyway, I hope we answered that, it was John Dave chapter, woman called an act of adultery, you've seen the righteous judgment um, the problem and the reason why people end up today, they can't answer these questions because they simply don't know the law. They don't know Torah. Torah is for you. The law is for you. The law is, is just, it's holy, it's good, it's right. You need to understand what it means so you can come out from a lot of this spiritual bondage. I got to get back to work. Where's my respirator here? And uh, we'll talk to you all a little bit later. Shalom.